All right, let's get into the word tonight. If you don't have your Bibles or your, your Bible app open already to uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 9, I want to invite you to open up as we get ready to read through that passage. When you have it, say amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. Everybody there? Yeah? Cool. It says, so the, the chapter, wonderful chapter. There's several chapters. Pastor Koba blessed us last week. Um, Koba, was it you or Pastor Josh? It was Pastor Josh. Pastor Josh uh, blessed us last week with a wonderful, a wonderful passage. Um, starting, right, getting into the Advent season and starting the Christmas stories leading up to the birth of Christ. The prophecies, the prophecies leading up to the birth of Christ. So here we have Isaiah, the prophet, and he is bringing a word from the Lord. And this is a powerful passage to me. It started, like, hitting me right away as soon as I started reading it. Because it reminds me that the Lord, the Lord is not just bringing change. He has brought change. Okay? He has brought change to the world. And... Since Christ has come to the world, life has not been the same, right? He turned things upside down. He changed things up. And, and this passage is a reminder of that. And it starts off immediately saying, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom. You see that? You see what's happening here? The people of Israel were going through a period in their lives where they were in gloom. Have you ever felt gloomy? You know what a gloomy day looks like, right? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like, like that gloom over your life? Almost like a shadow, an overcast of just, you know, it doesn't feel comfortable, right? Right? So look at what it says. He says, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. For those who were in distress, the gloom is going to become absent, right? That's the way I see this. If you are in distress, if you are in distress, there is hope, right? There is hope for us. There is hope in Jesus Christ. It says, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, but in the future... He will honor Galilee of the nations by the, way, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. And then it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. So several things. He says, for those who were in gloom, right? He says there will be no more distress for those who were distressed. He says he will bring honor. Did you guys catch that? I hope you didn't just read over that. But he says, for those who were in gloom, for those who were distressed, he says he will bring honor, right? Now he says in verse 2, the people, all who were walking in darkness, all who were walking under that shadow, all who were walking in hopelessness, A lot of times our situations in life will seem hopeless, right? He says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. I like how he gets specific and kind of graphic there. Because it's not just darkness that he's talking about, but he's talking about a very deep darkness. There's times that we go through Darkness that is extremely deep, right? Right? And we don't see an end to that darkness. It's so dark sometimes that it can even be tangible. You ever experienced a darkness like that? Where you couldn't even see, like, your hand in front of you? You ever been in a dark room like that? I'll never forget. We got, like, we got a little bit of time. I'll never forget, we were coming up, there was like a group of 12 of us that traveled, this is, I'm talking like, I don't know, maybe 15 or so years ago, a group of us that went to climb Half Dome, and um, it's an all-day hike, right, 
And if you do it at a, at a good pace, you can get back at a, at a decent time. If you start off like at 6 a.m., which is what we did, and you'll, you'll, you'll climb Half Dome all the way up to the top and climb back down in about eight hours, okay? That's at a good pace, like good steady pace, okay? We didn't have a good steady pace. <laughs> we were out of shape. We were tired. We were, we were just, it was, and there was 12 of us, all shapes and sizes. So we did not have a good, a good pace. But check this out. As we were making our way back, Two of our guys had sprained their ankles, so we were helping them along. And our good friend, a good friend of ours, forgot the backpack with all the flashlights in it, right? And then there's a certain point where the, the trails split, and you can take a trail that goes down the edge of the waterfall where there's, there's no rails, there's no rope, it's just the stones along the side of the cliff and a big waterfall. And those stones are moldy or they have like moss and, and they're wet, right? They're slippery. And then the other trail is a little bit longer. It, it takes you out a little bit longer, but it's away from the waterfall. Well, some of us ended up on the waterfall trail and some of us ended up on the other trail. But I, I'll never forget there was a certain point... <laughs> I wish somebody could have had a camera on us where we were walking along a trail and it got so dark because of the trees covering. It got so dark that we couldn't even see in front of us and we kept hearing noises and sounds. So we had sticks and we were doing this the whole time, right? Like if something comes out, man, I'm going to at least poke its eye or something. But I'll never forget what that darkness felt like. And we were so upset at our friend for forgetting that backpack. We were like, dude, you just had... That's all you had to remember was to bring the backpack with all the flashlights. We all had different things that we were carrying for the, for the team. It was 12 of us. Boy, that was some darkness that we were walking through. And I'll never forget that. But as I read this passage, it reminded me so much of how God created us to also be light. He created you and I to be light. Did you know that? Did you know that? Inside you and I right now. There's electricity flowing in us. That's, that's crazy. I was watching a rescue team the other day, and it, it hadn't dawned on me that when somebody drowns, in order for them to be able to resuscitate by, I don't know what the, the actual terms are, but by, by shock, right? Resuscitation, they have to reach a certain rhythm. And they can't resuscitate them until that rhythm has reached, has been reached. I didn't, I didn't know that. That was something I was completely unaware of. And as, I, as they were trying hard to resuscitate this person, and they were performing CPR on their body, their body was lifeless. It was a, a, an ocean beach rescue. And I was like, man, and it wasn't until they felt a slight pulse that they were able to start and that they saw the machine that he was attached to. Um, that they saw that he had a little bit of a rhythm that they were able to do the, the shock, resuscitation, if that's what it's called, or compressions, right? Something like that. Um, but it hit me, and I was like, you know, all of us have electricity flowing through us. Every single one of us was created to be a spiritual light in this world. And I'm going to do something real quick just for us, just for fun. Is that Okay. Guys, let's go ahead and turn off all the lights. We can only dim the stage lights so much. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, ah. All right. All the cans, too. That back row cans. All right. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty dark. You know what? Let me do this. So you guys don't see my glowing face. Everybody at home right now is like, what is Pastor Joe doing? All right. Don't turn on your lights yet. First, I just want, like, a few of us. If you have a phone, turn on your, your flashlight on your phone. And then hold it up. Okay, there's a few right there, right? Okay, everybody look at the, flash, the phone flashlights. Everybody's got it? Okay, cool. Those are pretty decent lights, right? Are those pretty good lights? They get the job done when you need it, right? When you're in a pinch and you're looking for something in your trunk, <laughs> in your glove compartment. All right, let's see. Uh, Pastor Manuel, he's got a flashlight back there. Go ahead and turn that on. 
Point it right at me. Can you guys see me pretty good? That, that's a pretty small light. Now we got Frank back there. Frank, go ahead and shake your light so everybody knows who you are. That's one of our ushers there, Brother Frank. Okay, he's got a nice bright light. Small lights, medium lights, larger lights. I brought one of my shop lights from home. Okay. This one has like three little lamps on it. That's one. Right? That's two. And then I have the center one. All three. All right? Pretty bright. Right? I can see most of you guys, depending on where I shine it. All right? Okay. Let's get the lights back on. We were cracking up earlier because, you know, some of our lights are, they kind of flicker, right? <laughs> some of our lights are a little dim sometimes, and we need to get new batteries in them. This one's rechargeable. I hate it when I'm trying to work or do something outside in the dark, and then it just shuts off. And I'm like, man, I got to wait the whole night to recharge it and get some light. And I usually take that as a sign. It's time for me to go inside the house. But we all have... As we saw and we demonstrated, the lights are all different, right? But what does the passage say about the light that came? What does that say? What kind of light? It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. It, it, yeah, it's not just a good light. It's not a light that's just enough, like our phone lights, right? It's just enough, right, in a pinch, and, and a little quick, like, oh, man, I lost something under the bed. Where's my phone? <laughs> you know, I don't think and many of us have, like, a lot of flashlights at home anymore because we just, right, we go to the phone. But this says that it was a great light that came to bring hope in the midst of the gloom and the darkness. In a time where it seemed... Like there was no hope. All of a sudden, there was that glimmer. And it just didn't stay a glimmer. It became, and it was, it says, a great light. And it was such a great light that it brought, right, that hope back into their lives. The hope came back into our lives the day that we came to know Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading. And it says, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Have you ever been up that early to see the dawn of the new day? Yeah, as the sun is rising. Isn't it majestic? Isn't it amazing? If you've ever seen it from like the top of a mountain, it's glorious. And those living in the land of deep darkness, it says, there was a land that was covered in deep darkness. A light has dawned. It says, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. Oh, man. You have enlarged the nation. You, you know what that means? That God not only brings us out of darkness, but when he brings us out of darkness and he gives us new life, he also enlarges what you have. In other words, he expands what you own. He expands your life. He gives you a greater life than what you had and what you ever even hoped for. Isn't that amazing? It says, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. As warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the story that is found in the book of Judges. Chapters, I believe it's chapters 6 through 7. The book of Judges. You can read it on your own, but I'll give you like a really quick, quick recap. Gideon is leading an army, and it's a big army. But you know what God does? He whittles down the numbers to prove to them that they need his help. To prove to them that he's the God of their people, to show them that they can't do it on their own. 
In other words, that there's a need for a savior. And when you, if you go and read that in, in the book of Judges, it's, it's awesome. And sometimes we read things in the Bible and the scriptures and we think, what does this have to do with the birth of Jesus? Because he's not, they're not, the prophet's not speaking these words and, and, and bringing up the story of Midian just to do it. Just to kind of say, oh, it's kind of like what happened there. No, there's a, a, a great connection here. And in that passage, he says, there's too many soldiers, Gideon. And he sends thousands of them home. And the way he does it, he says, ask them if they're afraid. And anybody who raises their hand, as a show of hands today, if you're scared, he says, leave. A bunch of them left. Like thousands of them got up and left because they were in fear of having to face the Midianites. And then he goes even further, and he says, now take all the guys that are left and go down to the water. And he puts them to the test again. They end up, I think, from like having 70,000 or some, something crazy, outrageous number like that to having 300, 300 men. But he tells them, you guys aren't even going to have to fight. And you know what he arms them with? You want to know what he arms them with? A torch. What's the torch for? It's a light. Isn't that cool? Because he was going to send them out in the midst of the darkness, in the middle of the night, it says. He armed them with a torch, and we'll call it, you know, a to-go container. It says a pot. They had a pot in their hands. It was a pot and a torch. He didn't, give, he didn't say pick up a sword. I mean, he didn't even ask them to grab a hammer. Okay, it's nothing. It was a torch and a pot. Oh, and a third thing. This was cool. A trumpet. And he's going to send 300 guys to face an army with a trumpet, a torch, and a pot. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And God says to them in the middle of the night, get up. Take the men with you and go. And you know what the pot was for? At a specific moment, when God instructed them, they would toss the pot on the floor to break it. And, I, and the sound was to create crashing, rumble. God basically took them and their worship and their trumpets, and then they played the trumpets. And he took that sound, and with that sound that they were making, from the crashing of the pots and the blowing of the trumpets and even their praises because he, he had a specific praise. He asked them to sing out. And in the midst of that, he caused confusion in the other army and they started turning their swords against each other. Isn't that amazing? And God says, all of this because I want you to know that I'm here to be your savior. You don't even have to fight the battle. You don't even have to fight the battle. It's a similar passage found in 2 Corinthians where he says, you're not going to have to go fight this battle. I've already fought it for you. I am the one that's going before you. I am the one that's going to deliver you. I am the one that is here. And it's awesome how it even makes that connection with their torchlights there in the midst of the darkness when he sends them out to create confusion among the enemy. Isn't that powerful? For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke. You hear that? You have shattered the yoke. You know what a yoke is, right? We're not talking about egg yolks, everybody. It's not egg yolks. Yoke like they used to put on the ox. They used to muzzle and, and harness the oxen so that they would tread on the fields. It was heavy, burdensome, okay? It was even painful for them to have to pull that through the dirt, to plow the dirt. And he says, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. If the Lord has shattered the yoke of sin over your life today, say amen. Say hallelujah. The bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. In other words, yeah, you don't need any of that anymore. Because the Lord has delivered you. He's won the battle. 
the battle of battles. And then, and here it is, the home run, right? The grand slam is more than a home run. It's the grand slam. Verse 6, for to us, a child is born. For to us, a child is born. Now he's going to bring in a child. In the midst of talking about war, in the midst of remembering what God did for them with Midian, with the Midianites, he says, and now to us is born a child. All of a sudden, there's this, like, when you think of a child, you don't think of, you know, darkness, right? You don't think of gloom. When there's a child in the room, there's a newborn baby over here. Eliza, she was born in October. I can hear her little whimpers over there. You hear that stuff, and it just, that's like joy to a mom and dad, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't miss the late nights, up all night. You know, it's your turn. You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but the joy of a child, and it says, for to us, for to us, a child is born. To us. A son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then verse 7, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. The change that has come, the change that has come to God's people comes with a peace that surpasses all understanding. Comes with the peace, like he said, hey, I'm, I'm going, but I'm leaving you my peace. And it's a peace that the world does not even understand. A peace that removes all chaos from our lives. A peace that removes all gloom from our lives. A reign on the throne of David that removes the darkness, that pierces it, removes it, and he says, that to that reign and to that peace, there will be no end. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Because now he's talking about his return. He went from talking about him being born and who he would be for us in his names. And then verse 7, it transitions into when he returns to reign on this earth and sit upon David's throne, he says, it's going to be endless. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Almighty will accomplish this. Isn't that wonderful? I want to leave you with this tonight as, as we prepare to close out. Each and every one of us, I, I was mentioning before, all of us have been given a light in our lives. We were all created with that light of Christ in our lives. We've allowed the darkness because of the choices we've made in life, right? Right? We've allowed the darkness to come into our lives. I asked my, my, my boys here a few nights back, hey, guys, I said, is, is darkness bad? And, you know, my two oldest, their immediate response was like, yeah. Because <laughs> they're already at an age where they connect, they connect darkness to evil. But then the youngest one blew me away. He's only six, and he goes, no, it's not bad, Dad. And I said, and I said, you're right. Yeah. I was like, 
you're right, Logan. Darkness is not bad. I go, why isn't it bad? And he said, well, if we didn't have nighttime, if we didn't have darkness, we, our bodies need to sleep. We need to rest. And I said, you're absolutely right. I said, guys, God created darkness. He created night is what he created. He created it. And he said, it, hey, the nighttime is going to be governed by that moon, right, by the light of the moon. But sometimes the darkness that we allow to enter our lives is so deep and so thick that we don't know how to get out of that darkness. And we can't just use any kind of light, right? Because some of our lights only can shine so far. But when this child was born, there was a light so great and so powerful that brought peace, that brought justice, that brought righteousness, that brought hope into a hopeless place, into a land that was forgotten. Right? And he filled yours in my heart. And he gave us rhythm. <laughs> and that light resuscitated us, right? And each and every one of us now can be a reflection and a beacon of that hope of that child and the peace that comes with that child for all those that are hopeless around us, who are lost around us. As our kids today at their, at their school, a public school, sang Silent Night, was it? I couldn't help it. I started crying. Because here, here is a public school, an LAUSD public school, still allowing their kids, their babies, to sing. If you don't remember the lyrics to Silent Night, oh, man. I couldn't help it. The tears were going down my face. And I, I just had my head down, and I was blessing that school. And I was saying a prayer for all the parents that were in there. This place was packed with parents. Wall to wall. They were, I don't know how many parents they squeezed into this little tiny auditorium. <laughs> there was a, a, easy, easy. It was, it's a small auditorium. It's an elementary school here, 232nd place. Small auditorium. They had tons of parents in there. It was crowded, packed. But I said, in that moment, when those little voices were singing, Silent Night, Christ, the Savior, is born. There was a quietness to that room and a peace that filled that room that I said, man, only you can do something like this in a moment like this, at a place like this. Let's pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Father, for sending us your son, that we may have peace in our lives, that we may be able to look at the chaos, the hopelessness that we're reminded of, even in a figure, an image, as that young man that took his life that has flooded our social media today and our news outlets. Lord, I pray that should there be someone who feels hopeless right now, who feels desperate, in despair, who feels lost, that your light, that your light would penetrate their hearts Penetrate their soul and light up, light up and remove the darkness in their lives, in their hearts, in their minds, and that you would fill it with peace and joy and hope that we find in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate during this time, even in the midst of the ugliness, the darkness around us, we can still celebrate because there is a light that shines through us because of you, Jesus. We pray over your people tonight, and I thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory over our enemy. I pray a blessing over your people, and I cover them with your anointing tonight. 
bless them, be with them, that they be encouraged and filled with the joy that can only come from you and a peace that surpasses all understanding. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.